touch my mattresses, which is a huge relief. And as any parent knows, the most important part of a mattress protector is protecting against stains and moisture. My little guy is pretty good when he's awake, but nighttime is a toss-up, and that's okay. Accidents happen. <laughs> no more mystery stains on your nice mattress. The Purple Protector is waterproof and water absorbent, which will keep your mattress dry and clean. It protects the top and the sides of your mattress, so no matter what spills or leaks out of your family members, you'll know your mattress and your warranty are safe. Oh. It's stain resistant, so I can just throw the protector in the wash and it's good as new. I wish I could do that to my husband. It's hypoallergenic and non-toxic, and it's resistant to dust mites, which can be a problem in the forest. It's cool and breathable, which means no more waking up sweaty and damp like a Wookiee's armpit. I even have one on my bed. It's so comfy, I can forget it's even there. So when Junior gets scared and joins me in bed, I can rest easy knowing my mattress is protected. It even comes with its own 10-year warranty. <laughs> what a sweetie. Being a mom can be so fulfilling. And the purple protector gives me one less thing to worry about. If you or your little monster sleep, click now to protect your mattress. Order your stretchy, soft, waterproof, stain-resistant purple protector today. You better believe it's real. Okay, microphone is working now. Hey, Sunil. Uh, got some weirdness with the audio. Uh, which for some reason is not playing through now. I'm getting it in my headphones, but not playing there. Um, so let me just do a quick check. That shouldn't matter. Speakers. Uh, yeah. Through the jack. So that's weird. Why is the... Oops. 
Why am I not getting the right audio? Desktop audio. Um, hmm. Why would that not be a, a thing? Um, hmm. Well, oh well. Video is very laggy. I apologize. There's not much I can do about that. Um, you know, I wish my I could fix my internet, but that is what life is. I do not have an ISDN or T1 line, or whatever it is. All right. Um, let's try this. should pick up. Yep, speakers are now sp picking that up. But I'm not getting it. Weird. Now it's working. Unfortunately, I think Windows is doing some weird auto enable disable stuff with my audio. Um, and, okay, that might do it. <laughs> Fair enough, Sunil. Alright, so if I get anyone in the chat room, we'll find out if this audio is. Uh, Let's get, actually get, get started here with some of this. So, putting together uh, this down here, which is a One second. Huh. Let's try autofocus. There we go. So, some of this gun, which is P2, P4, and P5. So let's get started on that. There's P2. That comes right off. P4. Which I can just pop right off. And P5, which is right there. Alright. Feels good to be back into this. It's been a while. Good. So this guy goes on the end of this guy. Oops, wrong end. Okay. And then that goes here. Presumably there's a very clear way that should go. Uh yep. Okay, fits right in there. And then we attach P6 to the side of that. And this plastic is actually very, it's been quite easy to mess around with. <laughs> Watching YouTube in Japanese class. Naughty. Okay. Good. Attach that on. Okay, oh, there we go. Pretty easy. All right, so there's a little pistol all put together. I can handle that. Now we're moving on to a, a shield, looks like. So that's, yep, there's a P7. I can just 
stress clip that off. And get that done. There we go. The music here is by um, No Copyright Sound. In fact, I should probably add, let me do that real quick. Um, music. There we go. All right, so here's P7. Then we need PC4, uh, which is down here, I believe. The special, yep, PC. PC4, there it is. Looks like a, basically a PVC thing. Hey, SoCal Kane. Yeah, Shards Custom Zaku is amazing. Um, got that back there. Might be uh, breaking that out to do. I think it has a few weapons on it that I need to finish up with. Um, so, this PVC guy in there. And then N1. The PVC goes off to the side. Uh, and then P. Uh, o. N. N1. So these yellow ones off. Interesting. How's the um, audio level there, uh, SoCal Kane? In terms of the background music and indeed my own uh, my own voice. Is that all reasonable? My first time streaming with, with that going. That might actually be the, uh, the problem with the audio, so we'll find out. I know of a way of fixing that. We'll find out. Background music is a bit low. Okay, I can fix that. Alright, that is pumped up a little bit. Let me know if you want it a little louder or softer. Right, so these are, I'm assuming. Yep. They're symmetrical there, so these go here, I think. Yeah, all right. We've got these on the side. I honestly don't remember these these parts. And then N4, which requires some some alignment, apparently. I'll be more careful here. You can hear now. Good. I can hear now. Oh, but now I get ads. Okay. I will fix that. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll fix the ads some other time. Now that I've got some idea of how to do that. All right. So this goes on that way, and I assume we're going to align it, yep, e 4 and one and 4 okay, and then, okay, it's a very specific structure for the next one, so this is N5, this yellow piece here. Nice having some music playing. I'm usually not much of a music person, in the sense of you know working to music, but I can live with this. Okay, so there's N4. Okay. 
Okay, and then N3. It's kind of a funky, bouncy song. Yeah, Sharazaku 2 is one of those model kits, or one of those models that, um, you know, looked cool back in the 70s. And then as they kind of shifted around and kind of, you know, tweaked that design for later anime releases, it's just gotten sexier, to be honest. Um, all right, so they want to make sure we put N1 on, like, there. Nope. nope there and then and two onto that I go just like that nice color scheme haven't done a model kit in years fan of the classic designs yeah I mean I like all the era designs you know I don't I don't really find that they're particularly better or worse over time there are some pretty ridiculous things back in the old days. Um, so it's not like they have a <laughs> monopoly on weirdness in modern designs. Okay, there we go. And then that is supposed to pop on here. Ah, okay. There we go. All right, so that's there. Then we're going to attach P12, oh, moving off of N to P. Yeah, I, I have not yet played around with painting customizing. I might do some lines tonight. I might try that out. Because um, I've never done um, lines before, and I might just practice. P12. Looks like a gun. Gun barrel. There's P12. gonna go in here yep now that goes p11 it should be right next to it like this that's cute there's p11 um there's actually a place near me that that has places where you can do airbrushing it's like one of those games workshop places but i honestly feel a little intimidated by walking in there and saying Hi, um, I want to use your, uh, your stations to paint Gundam model kits. How would I do that? Um, I've just never done that before, so it's kind of weird. Um, and I'd kind of like to do that in a way that's, like, I could, I could stream or otherwise do publicly. Um, all right, then we move on to S. I'm definitely going to have to, uh, figure out a different way. Um, or there's S. Okay, now, follows the same song. S113 is this big guy here. Um, but I think painting's fun once you get used to it. Once you get into it, it's like, oh, yeah, this is just slapping paint on. Have you tried painting yet, uh, SoCal Kane? Done any experiments? Some people buy paint cans. You can invest in an airbrush. Yeah, like I've tried uh, painting with a, a brush, but I just get really thick lines. Um, it just feels like airbrush is the way to go. It's one of those things where it's just maybe I should look up how people do it with. Uh, paintbrush. Maybe I'm just using poor techniques. Or amateur techniques. Put it that way. Alright, so there's that thing, and it goes on which way? That way? Yeah. Okay. Nice. So there's that uh, sort of gun shield. Very classy. Yeah, eight years ago. And there's competitions. Awesome. That's really cool. 
Jink comes out. Love that. Uh, we're not quite done yet, though, with that piece. Um, 1202. So we need P3 going back to P. The weird thing is that. And this is. Is P. Uh, so we need P3. Is right there. That's a complicated one. Um, you should run a workshop for models. That's amazing. I should look up and see if that exists in my area. That'd be a good thing for um, convention. I wish conventions would have panels on uh, Gundam construction. Gunpla construction, rather. <laughs> Gundam construction too. I'd love to go to a uh, uh, an anime panel and say, like, "Here's how to build a Gundam in real life." Um, all right, so that's P3. So that goes on P1. It's up here. Looks like a, a, the hinge mechanism for uh, for that. Oh, that came off really cleanly. Yeah, it's a nice hobby. It's it's, it's a fun hobby. Um, it's interesting. So this goes on there like that. And then this goes on here. Yep, so there's the little uh, arm for uh, attaching it onto the side of the gut, the model. And then we attach S114. QR back down there to S. This is a little more bouncy and upbeat than I was looking for for Gundam construction, to be honest. I wanted something a little more serious, so I'll have to play around with the uh, with the playlists and try to find stuff that's a little more a little more serious, you know, epic Gundam music kind of stuff. All right. Um. So that goes that way up here. Okay, cool. Just a little, little bit that goes on there to sort of finish that off. All right, so there's our side beams, beams E thing. Now we move on to the boom, the beam saber actually. And for this we need O1. Oh, there are two of them. Cool. Do I have? Yeah, I do. So, and I think he already has. Uh, beam tapers on them. I'll, I'll check. Um, so I think these are, you know, you have the unused beam sabers and the used beam sabers. O, O, one and O two. All right. O one, ten, O one nine, and O two. Uh, the, uh, the, okay, yeah, gotcha. So we pop off. Beam saber pieces. How much longer on that? Maybe half an hour. Okay. So there's that. Um, and then onto that, we attach the, the other thing, the, the tip. Okay, we do that. Oh, it actually has a little registration stud. That's cool. So you see there's actually a little... Actually a little stud on the end of that that goes in to the uh, to a slot on the other thing. So what have you been up to, SoCal Kane? Haven't seen you around much. Watching anime, TV shows, movies, reading books, comics. What's new with you? Okay, yep, there it goes in. And then we can pop a beam saber onto that. And why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you have your beam saber running? Right. So I think we'll need a blade. Yeah, the plan at this point is to uh, 
finish these, I've got uh, two regular Zakus and a ball to assemble, I think. Yeah. And then I'm going to start working on the that ridiculous perfect grade that a friend of mine gave me. Been watching a couple of shows. Awesome. What you've been watching. I'd hoped to get to some anime today, but I didn't. Maybe tomorrow. Which is life. Can I actually sand this down? Sort of jelly like material? I can. Kind of. Not well. Not easily. But it is coming off. Okay. Cool. There's a beam saber. Cool. So we'll just go ahead and finish those off because it's just two, it's three pieces. Uh, Junji Ito and Koko. Fair enough. So I'm curious. I, I really did not like the first episode of Junji Ito Collection, as you probably noticed. Um, I, I found that first episode just not scary at all. Um, what was your experience with it? Was, was that first episode just kind of a, uh, you know, an, an oddball episode? Um, where looking back on it, it's like, okay, yeah, that was a bit of a misfire, if you will. Or is that just kind of the uh, the tone and the style of it? Now this sounds like Gundam, to be honest. Especially if it kicks into something here. Ah, okay, yeah. I figured that's what was going on. Um, that it was just it was like one of those classic things. That was a classic chapter, and they just kind of had to adapt it. Um, and it was maybe one of the one of his early stories so you know he, he got he got more uh, uh, more adept later on fair enough okay good thank you I'm, I'm glad to know that it wasn't one of those things where I'm like you know what am I not seeing here Nothing really horrific happens that episode. There are one or two creepy moments, but fundamentally, that, that episode is kind of meh. Okay. So, two beam savers. Sweet. Um, slam dunk. Cool. Um, yeah, I've, I've, I have not gotten into slam dunk, but that is one of those uh, you know shonen sports series that I'm like, if I... You know, if I were to commit to a Shonen Sports series, it would probably be something like Slam Dunk. You right back in just a second I need to grab my uh, tea in the other room. It's a good thing Geico keeps advertising because I think there there must be people in the world who do not know that Geico exists. So we, we clearly need more Geico commercials. Gosh. Okay, uh, moving on to some of the more of the weapons. Um, there's the gun. There's the shield going on there. This is something else. Um. Okay. Moving back to P as in Paul. Ah, come on. Beep. I, 
Adaptations. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, one of those things where you get to this weird moment in the uh, where you have to diverge. Um, and it's kind of weird for me because I I got to that through um, through Trigun was the first anime I was aware of where I was aware of how the adaptation differed from the manga. And the mangaka was very complimentary of that. Like, he, he was the one who asked for that particular anime studio because he was so impressed by the studio itself. Um, and so when they came in and said, you know, you are... And he was way far away from any sort of ending. He was like a decade away from ending that, that manga. And so they came in and they said... You know, here's how we think, here's how we would adapt this, and here's how we would tell the story over 26 episodes. And he was like, wow, that's, that's, that's better than what I'd come up with um, in terms of, you know, telling this story in 26 episodes. So, uh, and that, it has a very different ending and structure, but that's because he, he was so far away from that at that point in the story. So I think that kind of worked on that level. That was a, a smart way of doing it. Um, okay, so there's a very specific way this is supposed to go in. Yep, I see it. Only one angle. And then this guy goes on this way. Yep, we're definitely assembling some kind of large weapon here. Um, and then we're going to attach P13 onto that. 13. Good, we're getting close to finishing up the uh, P there. Ah, Magaka was not pleased with the anime version. That happens a lot. And that's, uh, again, a, a case where it's like, yeah, well, that's fine, but you weren't in charge of that. Right? So it's like... I get a little annoyed when folks are like, well, I would not have done it that way. Well, okay, but that's not, you know... You don't make that stuff, so you're not aware of all of the stuff involved, necessarily. Uh, all right, T2 and T1. Oh, T R T. You know, making a movie, for example, is very different from writing a novel. Um, and T2 and T1. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, this is a ridiculous, ridiculous weapon. Ridiculous. There's T1, and that'll be T2. Like when authors complain about how, you know, well, Hollywood completely changed and that Hollywood screwed it up. It's like, well, they may have, in the sense of it you know, could have been done differently, but also, eh, are you privy to all the things they were responsible for, for doing and for the deals they had to make to make that work? The compromises they had to make? to put those characters on screen. Um, okay, so this guy goes in. Oh no, okay, this is T3 and T4. So you assemble this, that goes inside there. Interesting. So I can pop it off of this. Yeah, other works on his other works aren't adapted into anime. Yeah, that happens too. That's another downside. It's like, it's like okay, you really sure you want to badmouth the people adapting your stuff? Well, then your stuff isn't gonna get get adapted that much. There, there are consequences for those sorts of uh, those statements. I really like doing weapons, I've come to realize, because there's such an immediate sense of satisfaction. You know, you assemble a few pieces and you're done, and go on to the next thing. It's so much easier than, uh, than a model kit was like, okay, I've, I've done the hand, you know. <sighs> stuff together good um and we have that that's there 
So this goes into that. Okay. Doesn't seem... Nope, like that. Okay. I think. Is that it? I think that's it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Ridiculously big gun. Rose of Versailles. I just started watching Rose of Versailles. That's cool. Uh, T6 and T7 for the thing on the side. The trigger. Ah, anyway, it went way beyond the manga, yeah. And also, that's Ikuhara. You know, Ikuhara definitely uh, <laughs> goes his own direction with things. An iconoclast. Oh. It's really good midway. Yeah, I admit I got five episodes in and had to stop because it was just so melodramatic. All right, I got five episodes in and I was like, okay, I get the show. I understand the characters and the motivation and so forth, but I'm just not not into it. Like, I recognize the quality. I'm, it's nothing against the show. Just not for me. Okay, so that clicks in here. The second half of the Dazaki picks up. Cool. Yeah, Dazaki is definitely a genius. Um, okay, so there's the, the rail thing. Hmm? How is that supposed to go in there? Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, cool. So that just snaps in like that. Sweet. And then T5 goes on the front, and that will finish out T. Yay. Yeah, watching Rose of Versailles actually caused me to rework, rethink my history of anime panel. I used to think that uh, Gundam was, the, was a... Uh, a real changeover for mature, sophisticated storytelling and long-form storytelling in anime. And it's like, nope, Rose of Versailles. Right, there we go. Right, so that goes on there. That wonderful, ridiculous big gun. And then uh, there's some stickers. Um... Four, five, and six. That can't be right. Doing the stickers. Oh, must not have done the stickers right. That's four, five, and six. But four, five, and six are completely different things. They're like little logos. Huh? Maybe there are some stickers. Oh wait, there's also stickers. Four, five, and six. Okay, yep. Um, I'm gonna give it a try. So we go four in the back. Gotcha. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. I might end up um, going back and like skipping to the second half then. That's very helpful. This is one of the reasons I love having a chat because they can, they can provide that context. I'll, I'll find a wiki and kind of say, okay, where does the, how does the plot kind of bounce around? I have no problem whatsoever saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip some episodes and uh, move forward. And I can always come back and watch the others if I really need the context, but I don't need to watch every minute of every show. 
Like that wave eye is madness as far as I'm concerned. So can you tell me what it is about the second half that blew your mind? I mean, you, you sold me, but I'm just curious. If there's anything specific that kind of leaps out at you as being particularly remarkable. Those stickers in. All right. Nice. So there's your big gun thing. We're not done yet. Now we take. What is that? 11. This thing? It is. Wow. Huh? But no, it has a little pistol thing in it. You build multiple 11s? Well, there's only one. Do you pop that off? No. Oh, wow. Okay, that actually slides back. And that slides in. <laughs> wow. And then that, yeah. Sort of chunk. That's nuts. Um, and so that, let's see here, that goes that in, that, and then this can come out, um, or you pull that out, and then this, wow, that slides in, that's amazing, um, and then there's something about that little dealie. Is that another piece? That slides forward. And uh, goes on the side of this? Oh, okay, yeah. So you either have this, which can also go Goes on the side of that. What? Craziness. What's, what is this? This is on the side. This is like. Oh no, it's that way. Where does that fit? There's some. There's that. So they're saying. I don't know, this is like 12. 12 to go to 12. 12 is. Well. That's that. So this can go. There. There. Whoops. Like that. Um. So you can somehow attach this. Yeah, wow. All right, so that goes there. And then this can go in here. I see. Yeah. I think. Yeah, that's in. That little guy goes in that little slot. Doesn't seem to want to, though. But that is the, uh, the thing. Ah, okay, there we go. Um, all right, so yeah, so there's your uh, kind of combined ridiculous weapon pack. All together, and then you can combine them in different, different ways. Character design greatly improved, good to hear. More than, more than the historical facts of the drama inside the palace, cool. Gotcha. Yeah, Dezaki is unquestionably one of the great unsung heroes of anime. Um, 
So okay, what I might do then is just jump forward to wherever Dazaki takes to, to get, ah, takes over. I'll read up on what how was happening and whether I need to come go back a few episodes to uh, start. Is there a point where you recommend I sort of jump in? And I don't mind skipping some plot. All right. Uh, so we'll start with the backpack now. We'll build that. It looks like that'll be done. Eh, it'll take a little while. Um, 18 through 22. So that is... Okay, so it's basically just a page. All right. Starting with PC 15. Connected to Q1. Moving to Q. T is complete. So thank you, Q. Or thank you, T. Into the trash. Um, Q1. 23. Ooh, some, some fun parts here. Some complicated bits. Actually, wait, Ikuhara wasn't Rose of Versailles, was he? Ikuhara was Sailor Moon. I'm, I'm, I'm backwards. I was, I, you know, you said Dezaki and I was thinking Ikuhara. I think I mean, we had the announcement of the Ikuhara show. Um, all right, and then Q118 attaches onto that. Nice music. Yeah, Ikuhara came, came along much later. Poor Dezaki. I mean, he certainly had notoriety in his day, so it's not like no one had any idea who he was. Oh, mm -hmm. that comes off. Okay. But it is strange that he's been just kind of ignored by modern fandom to a great extent. All right, so this goes in here, and PC-15. Um, importantly, goes in that way. All right, so we're assembling this piece. I have no idea what it does, but it's been assembled now, and now we're going to assemble the other half of that, presumably, Q124, or the alternate version. Um, they look like, okay, just pieces of the internal bits. Tadao Nagahama. Oh, Voltus v, uh, Voltus v and Combatler V. Fair enough. Okay. And then you get piece, uh, Q218. Wait. Oh, Q218. Ah, this is almost the end of... Of this not quite yet though but nearly yeah I've, I've not watched a lot of anime from the 70s a few things here and there um, certainly more than I think the average anime fan um, but certainly I, I have significant holes in my my knowledge there. Good, nice and clean. So we make sure that goes in that way. And then this big one goes on here. All right, so we got these that are something. Um, so I just assembled, I should probably Keep track of what I just assembled. So that is that is that one. That is there. So then R15. Find R1. P Q. Wait, Q. R15. Ooh, this nice big blue number here. That's lovely. Yeah, 10 volumes is short by manga standards. I certainly agree. Huh. Why did the audio skip out? Again, we're getting the same. Oh, it's just, it's it's a YouTube thing. Okay. Uh, 
I don't care that much. I will wait for that to figure itself out. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, 10 is, is definitely short by manga standards. Okay. So this goes down through there. Okay, yeah, and then just slides right in there. All right, so we've got these pieces. All right, so now we have this. Whatever that is. And then we're going to assemble uh, R1 and R15. I'm sorry, R115 and R116. R1. 15 and 16, these lovely blades. And 16 is going to be closer to me. Is not going to rex from 21 to the end. Okay. Cool. And is 21 a, a reasonable place to start on the story? Do you remember? I know it's always hard to remember. What, what, what was happening in episode 21? And sometimes when a, a new director comes in, they kind of um, you know, it's sometimes a little clear. Where you're like, oh, okay, there's 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 been a bit of a shift in emphasis and style and and all that, and so it's a little easier to get in. Oh, but Q120 goes between these. What's the next anime you might review for your channel? I really, really, really want to watch Gunbuster. The original. I had a, an unfortunate experience, in a sense. Uh, there's Q, okay. Q1 and Q2 backwards there. Let me grab this Q120. There it is. Um because you know, for, I've known for a long time how classic Gunbuster is, and I saw it was playing at a convention. And so I walked in to check out Gunbuster, and uh, the story, you know, it, was, it was ongoing. The, the story was kind of, was, uh, it was in the middle of the story. I thought I was near the beginning. I was actually near the end of the movie version. So I ended up watching this very, Yeah, clearly very condensed version of the ending of Gunbuster without realizing it. So that kind of got spoiled for me. But I would like to go back and uh, and do that. So I actually have it. It's sitting there, um, ready to go. But I just need to go ahead and uh, just sit down and start. I'm a little intimidated by it. I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, and then Q1. 31 goes onto there. Which is that. A major character dies at 21. Okay. <laughs> so maybe not the best place to start. Alright, I will go in and I will check the uh, the plot summaries and figure out a good place for me to jump in. On Rose of Versailles. Try it again. Um... Okay, so that goes here. Ah, yes. So there's your your central. Uh, so we're trying to put together the core fighter, and then we have the little wings on the side. That's S one, eleven and twelve. S one. Oh, don't fall. Uh, so S112 goes on this side. Ooh, that's... Wow, that's very small. Obviously not Miku. Right, so okay, yep. 
you know, that ridiculous little uh, detailing. Got to have a little red dash on the side, if you will. Plugs in. Uh, okay, slides in there apparently. Okay. Alright, yep, there we go. Oh, snaps right in, good. Alright, and we'll go ahead and fold under the. That's odd. Oh, you're, you. Really? That folds in there, gotcha. Okay. Eh. Thought of everything. Okay, so that slides in like that. Cool. Um, now we add on some other bits and pieces. We need a Q1, so we'll jump to that next, and then some R stuff from R. Whoa. Losing bits and pieces. Uh, Q. Q1. 25. Actually sounds not unlike uh, still alive. This song. What if that was an influence? Oh yeah, it was, it was absolutely aimed at a taco. I mean, it's, it's an OVA, you know, uh, from what I understand. You know, it is it is essentially having fun with anime and sci-fi cliches, but also. You know, telling a real sci-fi story. Yeah, like, yeah, like you say, it, it is. It sounds like it's primarily parody, and what I saw was clearly primarily parody, but with heart. Like not just uh, oh, constant jokes, haha. All right, R one six. That ending, man. That 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 final shot of Gunbuster got me in the feels. No question. As cheesy as it is. Uh, so there's that big bit, and then R117 and 18. But you gotta make sure you got aligned properly. Yep. Okay. So, what are your favorite mechas, Kane? Okay. Uh, so, the 17 goes over here. So make sure to keep that here. Oh good. A couple of my 3D prints are done. I'll probably kick off some more here soon, but I don't need to jump into that. Alright, so what do we got? We've got um he goes in here. And he goes in here. And then there's that. Okay. And then Q1 comes down somehow. Um, oh, right. Helps you align it right. And then this guy comes in. That's lovely. That is a really cool, cool fighter. I did not realize how awesome the Build Strike Gundam's core fighter looked. It's a much more Macross design. Yeah, I, man, Kane, I'm with you there. I can watch original Gundam all day, every day. Um, all right, so there's that. And now we're going to add um, landing gear. Q217 and Q121. Um, Q117. Q1 
Vitham. Na nice. That's one you don't hear much about. Can't keep seeing your errors. Weird. Huh. Should do 17 in Q1. Oh, no, that was Q1. 17. So that'll go over there. Um, I need Q217. This is the, almost the end of Q2. I've got some, uh, some network issues on this end. So you'll, you'll probably see some, some buffering and some stuff. Oops, turn that off. No weird jack stuff. Uh, so cute. Oops, that comes off as well. Um, so we have this comes back there, and then Q one twenty one. Q one twenty one is this. Uh, unclear. This is just landing gear. Botoms, yeah. Botoms is one of those things where I watch enough of it to get a feel for it to say, okay, I, I see where this is, and I, I, I was like, I really want to get back into this at some point and kind of dive deep into it. Like I had a lot of other uh, sort of anime, uh, <laughs> uh, anime responsibilities at the time, so I, I couldn't really devote myself to to that at that that moment. Um, pop that off, and then we need Q122 for that. Let's see here. Boom. Woo! There you are. But yeah, Votoms is really interesting. Definitely one of the darker mecha um, franchises. Okay, so this with this one we have that's gonna be it's really hard to see. Um, but I'm going to assume we follow that same basic idea and that basic idea there. Okay, so we've got some landing gear situations going here. Um, and so those can kind of fold up like that. Fair enough. Fold in. Okay, so that's nice and folded in. Now we're going to do the wings. Ha ha, life of na uh, Nacho Life. Call a lull. If you like the survival act of the, uh, aspect of the original Gundam, Vipom is a show I highly recommend. Cool. By the way, Life of Natural Life, um, you're you're spelling it wrong. Let's see here. There we go. Um, moving on to the wings. That's pretty cool. So there's that that core fighter design. Coming right at you. Really cool. Okay. Let's do some wings. Moving on to R. Hmm. Looks like uh, YouTube has decided to just not uh, not work for us tonight. So that's fine. So we'll go with. All right, so we're doing multiple different things here. Uh, all right, so we want R13. R13. Uh, interesting, so Votoms is just focused on that one character and presumably his experiences. Gotcha. There's R13 going on to R14. Uh, 
That was dangerous. But I survived. Okay. Let's see if we can get you two back now. Yeah. Just needed a, a quick press. Oh, and then it's a PC. Uh, PC 22 has sort of a connector, it looks like. Okay, so it is kind of repetitive with, with the main character going back and forth. That makes sense. Um, so here's our two. And then we use... It's weird. So there's... There's that. Um, oh, okay. So this goes in here. Presumably. Really? Oh, okay. Wrong piece. That's a PC-20, not a PC-22. Duh. No wonder it wasn't fitting. Hopefully I'll use that other piece here pretty soon and it won't get lost. Okay. Get off of that. Right. So this goes in here. That makes sense. And then this goes here. Okay, good. So there's our... Ridiculous little blade thing. Whoops, there. You don't want to push too far. Derp, derp. All right, then we get R12 and R11. There we go. And those go on either side of that. And that is one of those advantages of having one of those shows that focuses very heavily on one main character. Um, 0083 being a great example of that, where. You know, if you're not into that main character, you're kind of, uh, uh, you're kind of screwed. You know, if, if you don't find that character interesting, well, he's kind of all you get in terms of focus there. Um, do do All right. So here's that. This comes in... Um, how do we, okay, that has a little thing there, um, alright, and then, how do I know, boy, this is not very well documented in this case, um, I guess it's like that? How does it? it doesn't make sense. Well, maybe it does. All right. I guess I can go any way. Oh yes. Okay. So that can that can rotate on its axis however it wants to. All right. Good. So it doesn't matter. Uh, and then that gets encased in O. Oh. Oh, oh my. O one twelve and O one thirteen. I think it's on Dogrum. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. I had the same problem with, uh... Wait, this is 02. 01. 01, 12, 01, 13. Easy to find. Um, I got a few episodes into Fengen on Dogrum, and then even there, it started to, to, to get a bit, into a bit of a slog. Um, interesting show. But, uh... Slow. <laughs> slow, slow, slow. And that's part of its appeal. And it's part of why it was so remarkable at the time is a show kind of willing to do that. Um, but that doesn't make it particularly enjoyable necessarily. One of those classic problems of, of talking about these sorts of shows and, you know, what is a great show? It's like, well, some things were really impressive when they first came out, but they don't hold up to the test of time. All right, so... These, okay, yeah, these just snap in, essentially. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, okay. Gotcha. What is that? Okay. Snazzy. And then we attach um, 0114. 14, this kind of crazy, uh, 
cone, which goes like that. Yeah. Okay. There's that cone there. Whoops. There we are. Okay. So that is one set of uh, of these ridiculous blades. Let's do the other half. But yeah, I was very impressed watching uh, Dogrim and realizing, wow, they're telling a uh, something you know, certainly pretty close to a a modern war equivalent in Gundam. Yeah, that felt much more like a. Um, Two, two, put them top. Um, like a, a Vietnam equivalent, than uh, than World War Two equivalent, um, and even even shows like I've I've said that that Botoms is kind of a Vietnam approach to Mecca, but that's more in the psychological sense, where it's about the trauma. Of fighting in a, in a war, but the tactics of Votoms are are not really very reminiscent of that. Dogrim is definitely one of those. Well, it's, it is explicitly about a group of locals fighting this war of independence for their own uh, on their own planet, and it's sort of guerrilla fighters versus a better equipped other force. So which are using these twenty twos. Um, so yeah, so Dogum is kind of shocking in that way. Where you watch it and you're like, whoa. Uh, whoops, these are these, these, these for later. I need R two three. R two three and Yeah, these guys. Got a little ahead of myself, that's okay. Um and that is definitely what makes one of the things that makes that Dogrim so refreshing is that you are definitely feeling the sense that these are desperate soldiers uh, cut off from help, um, by and large, and they have to really struggle to uh, to overcome these other uh, other forces. Another reason why Ideon was so interesting, same kind of idea, is that it was very much, um, you know, very much felt like something, something new in that sense. It felt like it was this desperate struggle to escape. All right, and now we put on. Uh, 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 and like we said, that just goes in there, and that just drops on like this. Okay. So there's that, and then we take O2. O2-12. O2 and O2-13. Pretty obvious which ones those are. I do like just kind of stressing these off of the the sprues. I think that's that seems to, at least for me, do the least amount of damage. Yeah, with some exceptions. Good. Snap those on where they belong. Uh, very clear where those should go. Oops. Just a little bit. There we go. And there we are. Then we pop on. O two fourteen, which is again one of these lovely cones. Get 
that, and that will end the other tip. There we go. All right, so we have two wings. Sweet. And now we will move. Yeah. Okay. And now we move on to, uh, what else? What are, what are we doing? I believe these are guns. Big guns. Gotta have big guns. Um, as part of the wings. Because yeah. it is Gundam. Q127. I think the end of Q1 as well. 27, right there. Oh, it pops right off. Okay. So I think once I'm done with... Um... Once I'm done with all this stuff, I will start looking up some some other fun stuff to, uh, to 3D print, as I said, for uh, for the model kits. So I'll, I'll finish up all these weapons and, and things. Or, well, can I? Yeah, this is basically it. And I'll do that live. I'll pull up a, a web browser and we'll look at some things I can 3D print. There's actually somebody who uploaded you know, the, a full 3D model for some... Uh, Gundam Mecha that just hasn't has never come out as a model kit, and so we just 3D modeled and released all of those th those designs. Now, a desktop 3D printer can't necessarily get that level of quality um, in terms of all the snap fit and so forth. But it'd be very interesting to try, and, and I'm, I'm I don't think I want to start by 3D printing and assembling a model kit, uh, but I, I'm interested in trying something and seeing where I could go. So maybe. Um, you know, and I'll just start with some replacement parts, like I said, some weapons, maybe maybe something like that. Um, R112 and R110. So there's 12. See, doesn't want to come off. Okay, 12 and 10, which is right there. So, might as well snap that off. Good, that's still going. 12, and 10, off. Mm. maybe one of these days I will go and I will get the Gundam colors and fix some of these, these spots that are all, you know, when that happens, that gets me annoyed, um, I have to shave off some bits. Can't see that very well, and I get a a white mark on there where I had to sand that down. So that'll be kind of nice. All right, what do we got? Uh, so this is that, and this is that curve piece, and so this comes down like this onto those, and this comes down like this onto there. Okay, so we've got a like a thruster looks like, yeah, definitely a thruster, uh, and I'm gonna add. Uh, Q129 and O116. Uh, so Q1, uh, yes, Q129. Okay. Inspired by the Cuban Revolution. Gotcha. Okay. That, uh, that makes sense. Now, obviously, similarities to Vietnam, but not uh, not quite the same. Um, all right, so Q129, make sure it goes in the right way. Oh, good, and they give us a nice. But it can only go in one way. Okay, and then O116. O1. Jeez. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Uh, 16. 16 is that one. Yeah, somebody on the uh, on the YouTube channel pointed out that your know, kit bash does mean putting together pieces from different kits. Uh, another one, you know, not just assembling model kits, which 
I knew, and I've, I've always wanted to expand this to not just assembling gun and model kits. But that comment got me thinking that yeah, maybe it's time. Maybe it's time that I start doing some other uh, some other stuff. All right. So then this goes on here. Presumably it only goes one way. Uh, there's okay. Ah, orient it. I see. There we go. Yep, so there's our thruster. Okay. And then we're going to add our. Oh, and then a wing on, goes on that. So, 0115. Ah, yep. Very close to closing out 01. That'll be done soon. Yeah. Gotta refresh the page. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, internet's just weird. Sometimes, sometimes it's their end. Sometimes it's from here that there's something weird going on with how the internet is connecting to everything. I connect to R114, and I see R1 right there. R114, there it is. Oh. goes here and then this goes here cool and then a wing is on the side of that so we got to make sure it's the right orientation okay so there's a side thruster nice angle and a wing on it uh, all right so then we'll do the other one the other thruster then we assemble a big gun that goes under that. Always gotta have more guns. Uh, so we start with Q128. But yeah, I am currently playing this music by streaming YouTube, which I'm sure is not helping the internet connection situation. So I will fix that by downloading this music next time. Um, I just wanted to try this this time and see if it worked. But in future, I should have it all locally, which should, you know, at least help some aspect of the internet, whether that is, uh, you know, whether that, that is the issue or not. R19. There's R1. 9 and 11. Yep. Nine is on the bottom. It's always, always fun to come across another mecha fan. Mecha fandom's weird. You know, people are either into mecha or they're not. It's, it's, it's hard to get people into mecha. It seems. Um, it's, you know, when I do panels about mecha, I almost always just get mecha fans in there. You know, not folks. Even when I say this is just introduction to folks who are not familiar with it. I almost always get folks who have watched a whole bunch of Gundam in there, um, or a whole bunch of mecha series. I'm like, why are you here? They're like, well, there aren't really any other mecha panels at the con, so it's like, if I want to, you know. If I want to have any, want to be aware of anything having to do with mecha, I'll have to go to the introduction panel. It's like the only one here. Like, okay, fair enough. Okay, why isn't that going in? Um, yeah, that goes there. Okay, let's just do 
okay, there we go. I just wasn't wasn't aligning properly. Um, and then there we go. Okay, there's the beginning of that thruster. And we get um, Q. And Q should be closer. Q130. What am I losing there? That's M. Losing M. MGM, MGM. Uh, Q. No, that's P. Q130. Ooh. Almost done. I wonder where that goes. Might be a piece for the uh, stand? I don't know. And granted, that's how it was for me. Like, I got into Gundam and Mecha in general, not because anyone else said, oh, you should watch this Mecha series, but because I was curious and uh, checked them out. A one. It does seem to be one of those things. It's just down to individual interest. 0117 should be that. Is that it for 01? I think that's it for 01. It might be in for 02 in a minute, too. Uh, let's check. That way, that is that way, it slides right on. Oh, one, you are done. Thank you. So I need to move down the stack. Oh, two, and here we go. Oh, two, fifteen. Whoa. Oh, come on. Why are you on so? So firmly. And yep, O2 is done. Thank you. Then we need R1 13. There's R1. Not quite done with R1 yet. But we may be using that here. Uh, always exciting to get down to that last. The last few pieces of the kit. Okay. And this might be the end of this. Uh, Bit of sandpaper too. I've been using it a lot today. I've actually been uh, making coins. Oh, actually, let's pop right off there. Uh, coins for Dungeons and Dragons. Pop there. Pop there. And uh, 3D printing those, and needed to sand them down quite a bit. And so then we have this go on here. Interesting thing. Maybe internet after all. I spin having some issues. Yeah, the internet's weird. All right, so there's that side thruster with the wing. Lovely design there. Can't imagine animating that. All right, let's grab R119. And under that, we'll add S19. One nine. <laughs> Definitely a case of a. We have a lot of little miscellaneous pieces on, on these. Right. There we go. Oops. All right. So there's. How does it work? S one. Obviously, like a grip. 
goes here. All right, clips in there. It's oriented that way. All right, so there's that. Um, then we want to move that back down. Rotate it down. Okay, it's rotated down. And then flip it over. And then we're going to attach, because there are other parts of Q1. R, R, oh, what do I? R2, you are complete. Thank you. Uh, but we need Q1, 16, and 19. Q1. So what is on your mecha watching list? Q1, 16, and 19. I'm really looking forward to the upcoming Full Metal Panic final season, probably, almost certainly. I know there's a lot of plot from the manga and the, or the, from the novels that they have not gotten to. So I'm looking forward to seeing those, uh, seeing those stories actually dealt with. I've watched all of, uh, well, almost all of Full Metal Panic anime. Uh, like the first half of the first TV series, and then all of Fumo Fu and Second Raid. Um, Alright. So we have this. Yeah. Um, so this Q1 goes here. We attach that there. And then this goes in, makes sense, attaches that way. Okay. Very straightforward. I can just align it with the holes correctly. Hmm. There we go. So there's that, and then we're going to attach R17. Seven. Yeah. All right. One way of dealing with that. High dive. Yeah. Definitely. Ah, Tokusatsu. You were in Tokusatsu. Fair enough. I had no exposure to Tokusatsu in my youth, which was not on the air, not available. So I was sadly, oh good, I could use that, that piece. Um, okay, so that goes here. Interesting. And then, goes in like this. And it can still hopefully pop up. How do you pop that up? How weird. Um, oh, the double guns. It doesn't want to come up. Huh. Getting caught on something. I'm confused. Yeah, that's, that's not gonna. Clearly done this wrong. that
Sure looks like a gun. Apparently not. Okay, maybe this is just a thing. But how? Right, let me just double check. It goes in like this. Yep, that is out like that. And you fold it in. No, you don't. Okay, yep. Yeah. Okay. Like that. And then that can be flipped up. Okay, good. Alright. Yep. So. This goes on like this, right? Got it checked. Okay, yeah. So we can flip out that if we want to. Okay. Uh, so then we throw S110 onto the end of that, S110, end of S1, getting perilously close. I checked out Darling and the Franks last season, and I uh, liked what I saw. Nothing hugely mind-blowing from it as of episode one, but one of those, you know, yeah, I would definitely watch that. It's, it's a more super robot, let's be honest. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's definitely a super robot. Alright, so that goes in in the way that makes sense. Good. Alright, so there's that one. And then we will grab it. So we are sure S1. S1 is done. Thank you, S1. Now we move on to S29. S29. Yeah, see, this feels like the opening to an ending, uh, Gundam song. Probably won't end up being that way, but feels like it. There is that. Um, then that goes into R1. R1. Uh, 20? 20, yep. Sweet. Good to see Franks. So liking the clip I'm seeing. Yeah. Hey, WebFox. Good to see ya. Um, it'll remain. What remains to be seen for me is the characters. You know, the. the the indications I saw were, okay, this is kind of interesting, but uh, it was definitely going in a more um, over-the-top Q2, oh, Q2, uh, a little more over-the-top way. I was like, all right, where are you going with that? How, how, how ridiculous is this going to get? Q2, 16? I mean, over-the-top in terms of, like, melodramatic, you know, and very teen angsty. In Garling and the Franks. Yeah. Franks angst. That's the guy we need. Yep, Q219. Part of this as well. Q2, thank you for your service. goes on the end like that yep and then this goes over here lining up like that it goes away goes in much easier than the other one did for whatever reason um pc20 goes into r18 r18 and that does it for r1 This feels like an anime opening. Maybe a Bleach or a Naruto opening? What do you think? Oops, no. Uh, 
bit of a chip tune feel to it too, which is kind of cool. And it should go like that. Yep. And then, yeah. And to that, we add S two ten. You know, melodrama definitely works in a mecha show. It's just a question of what it, what it turns into an all melodrama show with no mecha. You know, and it's, just, it's all characters crying as they have these intense conversations with each other. And it's like, okay, well, that's you know, I don't need a mecha series to get to have that. So that that's good spice. It's good flavoring. Macross taught us that. But uh, yeah, don't overwhelm the show with it, please. Back, cool. All right, now we assemble these pieces. So we have, all right, uh, so here's our core fighter. We attach our wings to the side. Very cool. And then, ah, uh, yes. Um, then our guns here. Nice. Okay. Yeah. There's your core fighter, ladies and gentlemen. Flying right at you. That's a dang cool core fighter. This is one of the reasons I love the, the build uh, Strike Gundam. Is it's just so... So beautiful. Uh, very sleek, you know, very, uh, very cool lines, just, just barely to that point where it's not, it's not quite over-designed, you know, it doesn't feel like, oh, there are too many lines in there, but there's a lot of detail, a lot of, of attention to all those things, that's cool, um, all right, and then let's go ahead and assemble the, uh, the base, and put some of this stuff together. So, when I say the base, the, uh, the stand. I'm not really worried about uh, detail here. Like I just want to get this assembled. I can always come back in and fix little problems with the, uh, the plastic. Things with these big things. This is a good example of something you can 3D print, by the way. Printing these stands. You can just print one out, you're good to go. Yes, thank you. So we simply take this. Um, There. Ooh, had some some broken plastic there. That sucks. Um, and then this should just yep slide, slide in like that. Um, all right. Then ah, Q1. That's what, Q1. I've still got a fair amount of pieces left over here. I'm kind of curious about that. Um, I mean, I know some of them are like extra hand shapes and such, but all right, yeah, there's Q1. So Q126, the last piece on Q1, is a uh, a connector piece for the stand. Okay. Yep, that should be fine. So that goes in the bottom of the core fighter. Yep, right there. Um, and we can put that. Okay. So there's the core fighter on a stand. That's nice. Um, or, we can transform it. You can always transform it, right? So, how we transform the core fighter. 
Um, looks like we we rotate the these guys back, and then we can saying we can fold the core fighter cockpit. Oh, gotcha. Yep. That goes back to there. Okay, yep. And those will move back that way. Um, and then the wings do that. And we attach it. Let me grab a Gundam. The Gundam, obviously. His horns came off. Okay. And so that's going to plug right in to there. Let's see the slot. Yeah. All right. Um, and then, of course, these come up like that as extra guns. Um, and these. Ah, yeah. How do you... Oh, no. You want... This is really cool. Um, ah, okay, yeah. These are other the bits and other pieces you can throw on here. Um, so, yeah, we kind of... That's weird. That's showing the... Oh, I got you. You that way. Makes sense. All right. There you go. Oops. So there it is with the the backpack plugged in. Um, the core fighter sort of pushed to the back. It's kind of weird. I think it is supposed to be that back, back, back there. Um, maybe not. Do I remove the core fighter? I think I removed the cockpit. That makes sense. Whoa. Too much. I've got the back. So let's see here. So I pop. Whoa. Yeah. I'm going to need to glue the, uh, that on. It's a little too loose. Yeah. Um, so I think they're saying you're supposed to that, no? no? That's showing the, the... Interesting. So that is, this This is showing the cockpit folded down, but then this is showing no cockpit that I can see, it's just the two sides. Um, well that's showing, no, that's not the cockpit. Um, so maybe you just keep the cockpit there? I mean, technically it slides in, right? But I don't think that's canon. Um, I don't think that's what they're trying to show you there. Um, can you, I mean, can you do that? It doesn't feel like you're supposed to pull it out. So yeah, I think it just slides back. Um, yeah, that is folding those up. Okay, interesting. So now the question is, Yeah. There's a spot here. Oops, nope, he's an adapter. Um, that, that. No, okay. So there's got to be a way, there's got to be some kind of adapter for the... For that, I'm not seeing it. Uh, there's the stand. It shows the stand on the fighter, but there's got to be an adapter for. Um, okay, Q1. You're empty. Thank you. Um, 
R1, you are empty. Thank you. S2, you are empty. Thank you. There's not a lot of pieces here. So there's A. Um, oh, a little uh, pilot there. Um, B, some like shoulder bits. D has hands, a bunch of different hands. That makes sense. Um, e, other little bits and bobs. F, I don't know what those are. M, again, just weird little pieces. Uh, N, I think N's, no, N has little, little things there. And then P, we've got some other, other pieces and grills and such. It's interesting. Um, but where would there be other adapters for, is that it? like it. There's got to be something that will make it sit on there. If not, again, I can I can 3D print it. Um, that's, I know those are the right color. Uh, there's, oh, there's also L, which kind of fell out there. Those don't seem right either. Interesting. Um, I mean, you'd think, you know, it's just a simple stud thing. Um, where'd that go? That goes there. Falls in there. And then that should go up in there. But it doesn't. It's definitely not the right size. Let's see here. So we're sure. Yep, that makes sense. And that's just going to flop all around. Will it just kind of sort of stabilize? Nope. It's flopping all over the place. Huh. So I'm confused about that one. Um, well, that's again, there's some part I'm not, I'm not understanding. Or it's just not meant to go on the, the stand. Um... Oh, interesting. Some of these are marked with X's, so I think they're they're parts that you would get, they're the sheets you would get with other model kits that aren't used here. No, there's no indication I can actually put the model kit with that on this stand, which is kind of weird. Um, I feel like there's got to be some way, but yeah, it's gonna fall off. Immediately. Still, here is. The completed guy. We will give him a beam saber because why not? Everyone loves a beam saber. Come on, I know that's an articulated finger. Isn't it? Oh no, it's not. Okay. But I can I can make it work. Ah Okay. There we go. Cool, cool, cool. Very happy with that. All right. So that's that. And obviously we have other guns and such. And all the other stuff you can put on, on top of that. So. What are we doing on that? That is something I want to skip over here. Uh, let me... Let's see here. Yeah, that's fine. Um, can I do... Oh, okay. Uh, can I do transition? Will that work? That's weird. Um, one sec. 
For some reason, it isn't showing the, uh, the window. That works. Oh, maybe because I've got Twitter running, I've got YouTube running, Opera is one of those, oh, we can't show that. Um, I bet that's what's going on. Uh, all right, in that case, let's, let's see if that's what's going on. If I close that, can I now select it? No, maybe because it already had it in there. Um, maybe if I close it, start it up again, see what that does. So I'm starting it without any anything going on. It might just not allow web browsers in general. Looks like it doesn't. Weird. Um, so I was going to show you guys. I was going to I was going to browse some of these things. Well, let's try a different browser. Um, yeah, I do have Edge on here. Uh, I guess I'll just browse using Edge, see if that works. Nope, won't let me show browsers. That's funny. Um, all right, well, I've learned something new tonight. Uh, fair enough. Go back to this. Um, hmm. All right, so I'm not going to do that. <laughs> been streaming for about two hours now. That's a good amount for this. So I'm going to go off myself and start digging into 3D printable files for model kits. And we'll see what we do there. Next week, I'm going to start on some other model kits. Um, I have a, a ball and, a Zaku, and two Zakus. Uh, so I'll do one or both of those. Probably do the, the ball. Let's get that uh, through that and then... Uh, so I'm hoping I can kind of do, um, if I started, I mean, each of these will probably take a, a full a full night. Um, so we'll try that, and we'll, we'll do the ball, and we'll do, I mean, I would I would love to get to the point where I'm, I could do two Zakus in a night, but I doubt that's going to happen. So, yeah, that's the plan. In two weeks, we'll be back with that, if my calendar is correct. And, uh, yeah, thank you all very much for joining me. See you next time. May all of your model kits assemble cleanly.